there and welcome back. Today we are going to jump right into a topic that's a massive issue for many theater parents fundraising. If your child is involved in theater, chances are you're involved behind the scenes. Whether your child is involved in community or high school theater, the organization likely needs money to make the shows happen. Most people don't realize that there's an endless cycle of money in and money out that goes with theater productions. To even begin rehearsing a show and advertising it, organizations must purchase the rights to the show. The cost for the rights depends on the show's popularity, the venue's size, and the number of shows that will be held. Some shows show rights are relatively inexpensive, while others can be extremely costly. When our high school theater staged Grease a couple of years ago, they paid the most for the rights for that show of any show that they had ever produced before. You might think that the ticket money from the crowds of folks attending the show will offset the cost of staging a show, but you'd be wrong. In addition to purchasing the rights, theaters also have to cover the cost for things like props, sets, costumes, and makeup. Additionally, many theaters pay for extra folks to help with the production like a music director or a choreographer. Our high school is lucky enough to have talented high school band members who make up our pit orchestra, but some theaters have to pay musicians to play the music for the show. Finally, there are microphones or lighting elements to be purchased. It all adds up. And that means that even if you fill the house every night, you still might not make enough money from ticket sales to cover the cost of the show. So that brings us to fundraising. I'm sure you all know the basic types of fundraisers that every school holds. These include selling items from catalogs like wrapping paper, selling cookie dough or candy bars. The tricky thing with most drama departments is that they don't have a ton of kids. It's one thing to have an entire school participate in a fundraiser like that. It can wind up being pretty profitable, but if you only have about 50 kids in your department and only about half of them wind up participating, you can see where these types of fundraisers Raisers don't quite do the trick. Here are some ways to make money for your theater department that don't depend on the kids selling things from catalogs. Another key component to upping your fundraising is working with more families from outside your department. This video is probably going to make it sound like my theater department is continuously asking people for money, and that's honestly the case. We are still searching for our one fundraiser that we can hold year after year to help us raise the funds that we need to stage our productions. We have tried so many things. I'm sharing them with you because each each of these did make us money, just not enough money to settle in and have that be one of our fundraisers every single year. One of the most obvious ways to make money is to increase the amount that folks spend when they come to your shows. Aside from selling them tickets, you can sell concessions. I found that if you tie the items you're selling in with the show in some way, folks find the cute factor hard to resist. When we had a Christmas show, we sold hot cocoa and warm apple cider. Christmas cookies were also a big hit. When our high school did the Adam family, we had cupcakes that had graves on the top. We just crushed up Oreos, purchased little grave picks from Amazon and stuck those on. Packaging your cupcakes in a clear cup wrapped in cellophane bags helps customers take the item home. When we did grease, I made cupcakes that look like hamburgers. I also sold pound cake fries with strawberry sauce ketchup. It's not all about concessions though. You can also start a tradition of having a way to recognize the performers and the folks behind the scenes. Some schools sell flowers that family members can purchase just for their performer. Other schools hang pictures of the cast and crew up. Families can buy a star, write a message on it, and hang it up near their child's photo. Our school sells candy grams. We put out a bag with each cast or crew member's picture or name written on it. If you have a large cast and crew, it helps to alphabetize these. We then sell small individually wrapped candies. We put out labels and pens. Parents can write a message on the label and then attach that to the candy. You can also find ways to hold pre or post show events. Some theaters hold successful open opening night events. You can charge folks a bit extra for the show and you can offer things like refreshments, silent auctions, and pictures with the cast. These can be a bit of work, but if you can get the food and drink donated, you can make a decent profit. When our high school did Grease, we held a soda shop event after the show. A local ice cream shop donated ice cream and we were able to sell ice cream floats without spending much out of pocket. When we had a Christmas show, we had local vendors pay to set up tables and had a Christmas market before and after the show. Many theaters have a lot of success selling seat plaques. It's an easy ongoing fundraiser as most theaters have a fair number of seats. It could be helpful to reach out to local businesses in addition to your audience as they might see it as an effective way to advertise. 
advertise. Our football team won back-to-back -back championships and purchased some seat plaques to commemorate the event. We've also had alumni want to buy them and have their seats placed with their friends from high school. Online sales of tickets can be helpful, especially if you have the type of theater where shows actually sell out. This pressures folks to purchase their tickets early for fear of missing out, and that gets the money in your organization's account during the rehearsal process when you're probably still spending hand over fist. Memberships or sponsorships or VIP seating is another way that we have worked on adding to our profits by offering booster club memberships and sponsorship packages. With each of these, we've provided tiers. Our basic sponsorship package offers ads in each of the show's programs for the year and some show tickets. Our high-end package consists of a mention in every curtain speech for the year and the company's logo on our show shirts. They also receive a full page ad on either the back of the program or the inside front, and they get VIP reserved seating. Just look around at a few successful theaters near you. If you go on their website, you can see what they offer and what they charge for their memberships and sponsorships. This will give you a good idea of what your theater can provide and what you can charge. This past year, we used SnapRaise. It definitely raised the most money of any fundraiser we've ever done, but there were a couple of drawbacks. First, it was painful to see a fairly large portion of the money that friends and family donated to our organization go to SnapRaise. I am not faulting the company. They offer a service and a platform. They disclose their fees ahead of time, but it's still not fun to see how much you raised and then get a check for less than that. Additionally, as the coordinator for the fundraiser, I had to repeatedly bother students. There were specific tasks they had to do so that we could retain the largest possible amount from SnapRaise. I think this coming year we might try a different type of direct donation fundraising. If we require our cast and crew to bring a certain amount of physical addresses, we could send out pre-addressed envelopes and request money like that. It's a bit old-fashioned, but maybe if we include a newsletter talking about the program, people might donate. We could also reach out to alumni from the department if we have their addresses. One of the years we had a Christmas program, we attempted to hold a parents' night out. I'm not sure whether we didn't publicize it well or maybe people's calendars were too full, but we didn't have enough takers, so we wound up canceling it. We had intended to teach the kids a song and some choreography from the show. We also planned to have craft stations, decorate Christmas cookies, and play games. We have also tried raffle baskets. When people are purchasing their tickets, you can offer them a raffle ticket and also sell them inside once they see the baskets. If you're able to get each parent to donate a few dollars towards the purchase of the items or donate the items themselves, this fundraiser could be pure profit. You might consider having a combination. Maybe have a few smaller baskets or items that are drawn and given away nightly. Have some larger baskets that will be drawn the last night so you're selling tickets for those each night of the show. Many theaters have success in passing around some sort of hat or container at intermission. I recently saw a brilliant version of this at a local high school. After the first act but before the lights came up one of the cast members came out and made a plea for donations while still in character. It was hilarious and made people feel more inclined to give. A drawback of this is that so many people don't carry cash these days. A signed cast poster or cast picture has done very well for us. You can either offer these as raffle items or if you have enough you can sell them for a set price. I'm always surprised at the popularity of these but they are definitely a sought after item. A local community theater has the tradition of offering to have your picture taken with the cast after each show. It's quick and straightforward. People donate whatever they can, they hand their cell phone to a theater rep, and and go stand with the cast. The cast has a prearranged setup. The theater rep takes the picture and hands back the phone. In this day and age of social media, it's a win-win. The person gets to show their support for their theater friends, and it helps with word of mouth for the show. We've tried the same thing during our shows, and so far it hasn't caught on. I think it can be a challenge to change traditions. People in our community are used to the students coming directly out to chat after the show. Therefore, they don't see the need to pose for a picture with the cast. I'm hoping that if we keep trying, it could eventually be successful. This last section is full of ideas I've had that we haven't yet implemented. Unfortunately, we don't have a tremendous amount of parent involvement in our department. Many profitable ideas depend on a lot of manpower. If it's just a couple of other parents and me, some of these are just too hard to pull off. As we build our department and add more parents to our board, I'd love to give some of these a try. Most of what I'm talking about in this section
function would be considered community events. The good thing with community events is that you are getting money from hopefully more people than just your department. With any luck, depending on the event, you could even get supporters from outside the school. Ideas for this include holding a school dance, having a fun run, or having a fall carnival with a haunted mansion. All of these would likely be successful but require a lot of time and energy. Other ideas include doing things to people's yards. Some organizations egg yards by hiding Easter eggs. I've also seen organizations put flamingos in people's yards, and I've even seen where people put scary clowns all over the yards for Halloween. The basics are people hire you to flamingo or clown the yard of a friend or a neighbor. A note is left when the items are placed with instructions for lining up their removal, and folks can then send the items on to someone else. You can also sell flamingo or clown insurance so that people can keep the items from showing up in their yard. The final three are larger scale events. A golf tournament has been successful for many organizations. It helps if your supporters are the kind of people who play golf. In researching fundraisers, I also saw a high school that did something similar to Dancing with the Stars. They call it, appropriately enough, Acting with the Stars. They line up local celebrities or even beloved teachers from the school. Each celebrity is assigned a few high school students and they spend a few weeks working up a scene of some type. Money is made by charging tickets to attend the event. With each ticket to the event, the audience members are allowed a certain number of votes. At the event, they can purchase additional votes, usually just raffle tickets or something to put in a cup in front of their favorite act's picture. There are judges at the event, and the winners are determined by combining the judges' scores and the audience scores. Finally, I've seen a few theaters hold gala-type events at the end of their season. At these events, they unveil their next season. One drawback to this is that you can't publicly announce that you're doing a show until you've secured the rights for it. So if the gala was supposed to help you raise the money for the rights, that's not going to work out. I'll quickly tell you about a few flops we've encountered. Most of these have to do with fundraisers where we had to purchase product and wound up getting stuck holding on to it, or fundraisers that required us to meet a certain sales quota to get a decent percentage of the sales. We tried selling insulated cups and were stuck with quite a few of those for a long time. We tend to wind up with leftover candy every time we try selling those. Luckily, we can sell them as concessions at our shows. We also tried selling wreaths and poinsettias for our holiday shows. They weren't failures, but didn't bring in the money we'd hoped for. Finally, restaurant nights just don't tend to work out for us. Again, we are a small department. Our high school isn't great about clubs going to each other's nights. Everyone's busy, and they have a hard enough time getting to their own fundraising night. So when you only have about 20 kids show up and buy food, it doesn't add up to much. Plus, if it's just all theater parents spending money to eat out and only a small portion goes back to the theater, why not just give the theater some money directly? This way they get 100% of it. This video would go on forever if I kept listing every fundraiser I've ever heard of or considered, but please leave a comment down below if you've found something that's a good money maker, or warn all of us if you've tried something that was a total flop. Thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe and that notification bell so you'll know each time I upload. See you next time. <laughs>